Well, hello there and welcome. This is episode 52 of my Minecraft 1.16 Let's Play. I mentioned a couple episodes ago that my tree farm was very, very broken. And I think it's now time to do something about that. I had a black cat that I got back in episode 8 that was sitting in front of this tree farm and I had named him Ninja after one of my old cats that I used to have and uh, I was working away on this tree farm and all of a sudden I got a message that said Ninja had been struck by lightning. <laughs> it's, it's a little hilarious that he was struck by lightning but it's, it's also a little sad and it's also completely hilarious by the time I came around to come look and see what had happened. It was just a flaming crater where my cat used to be. So that happened. So this here is Fallen Breast Dustless Universal Tree Farm. And I've talked about CCS Covenant's Universal Tree Farm in the past. And I said that I'd probably build that if I had to build another tree farm again. But I went with this one instead for a couple of fairly small reasons. One of them was that this farm was just a little bit more compact. So it fit into the area that I had available a little better. And we can see that it actually fit into this building pretty well. There's some changes that I'm going to have to make. But other than that, it fits in the same basic footprint. So I liked that about it. And I was testing both of them in 116. And I had a very small issue with CCS Covenants that every once in a while, this pod soil wouldn't be pushed back into place so you couldn't plant a tree. It was a tiny little problem. It really only happened when you AFK'd and the farm was so fast that you never really AFK'd for very long. So it didn't really matter, but you know, like I just decided smaller size, a little bit more reliable. And the fact that it's dustless is kind of cool. And uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to take this apart at some time. There's some really nifty stuff like and figure out how it works because like it's got leaves being used for redstone signal which is really cool so it's got leaves that are pushed up and down and it's got trap doors with scaffolding on top of them and then it detects the change in the sca really fascinating stuff in order to make it dustless really cool stuff that like maybe every once in a while it might help me solve a problem if i figure out how all this works it's very very cool so i'm glad i did the dustless version just for that aspect alone but, I mean, this farm is a little bit slower than CCF Covenant's farm, but at the rate we're talking about, like over 30,000 logs per hour, the differences are pretty minimal. So, yeah, this one, this one seems to work really well. I actually had surprisingly few issues actually getting it to work. Um, it's actually working 100% now. Um, I had a few small issues where I missed a few small blocks. It didn't slag the whole machine or anything like that. It's actually really easy to fix this if it has a problem. So yeah, um, this will probably, this freezes my uh, frame rate when I do this. So it's probably not gonna come out any better in recording. It just completely locks it up. So you can't really see the tree get moved away. And it seems like it might be kind of slow, but if you actually hold down the button, it's actually really, really fast. You just can't see everything that's happening because it just kind of freezes the frame rate while it's moving the tree. But it's really good for TPS on the server. It's just not really great for your frame rate. And this is on, you know, like a pretty modern desktop with a really good graphics card. It just it cannot handle the moving of the tree because it's so fast. So that's kind of a lot of fun. 
The issue I had with Omango's tree farm was all the added complexity required to compress the logs into a single block stream so they could be blasted in the blast chamber down below. And so this gets around that problem by just having its own blast chambers. It's actually got two of them there. But yeah, I mean, Omango's farm, like, if you missed a single block, it would break, and it would break in like three different places. It would push a bunch of blocks out of the way, and if you didn't fix all of those problems, then it would cause three more new problems. It just continuously compounded like that until I just got tired of fixing it. It was just way more complex for its own good. There's elegance in simplicity sometimes, and uh, you know, it's just a lot easier to just move the logs as they are. This one divides them into high and low, and then just uses a blast chamber to blast them away. Now it does use a duper, um, you know, it, Fallen Breath's design, neither of the designs from Fallen Breath or CCS Covenant were especially TNT efficient. They basically use one TNT for every six logs or something like that. If you're crafting TNT, that's not a very good rate. So I went with the, uh, the actual dupers, you know, I might have been able to figure out some way. I just didn't want to, you know, blast chambers aren't really my forte. And, you know, I didn't want to spend a lot of time on this. This is my third universal tree farm. And I've used dupers so much, I can't really take the high ground on anymore. So I just left the dupers in instead of trying to, like, figure out a way around it and use actual TNT dispensers or anything like that. The dupers are fine. They work really well, you know, so I can't dispute that. And this tree farm is so quick. It actually would have been pretty hard to figure out a way around the problem. So there's going to be a third redesign for this building here. And I've already got that all laid out, but I don't want to worry about that today because I want to really focus on the storage today. But you will notice that I've taken out all of the ice windows. When I built this building, I said, do yourself a favor, don't mix ice and redstone. And I've decided to take my own advice this time around because that's actually why I ended up having so many creeper craters is because the lights had to be so precisely placed in order to avoid melting the ice that if one block ended up out of place, like you place a shulker box down, there's a good chance you've created a spawnable space. And on an island with no spawnable spaces, that's a decent number of mobs that can spawn on that one spawnable space. And close quarters like this, you run into a creeper, it's going to blow up something important. So I'm done with dealing with that. So we're going to go with glass windows. It actually ended up looking out quite a bit better once I did lay that all out. So uh, look forward to that. And uh, I look forward to not having creepers and being able to just spam lights wherever I want and not have to worry about melting ice and having it run over redstone. That was a big pain and I'll be, I'll be glad to be done with it. Before I move on to the storage building back here, I want to talk about this furnace array real quick. I think I finally found a solution to the uneven distribution of the output items. So I ran into this when I was working with the snowball farm in the end with the withers a couple episodes ago. And I had laid out the hopper mine carts the same way I originally did for this furnace array. And I was getting an uneven distribution, so that made me think that maybe that was a problem. So I started looking for other ways to lay out the hopper mine carts, and this is a different method, and it seems to be working. There's a little bit more testing than I need to do, and if all the testing goes well, I release a quick fix on how you can lay out these hopper mine carts a little better, hopefully in the next couple of days, because this is a really big benefit to finally have the items being evenly distributed. So there we have it. I put two shulker boxes in and I got two completely full shulker boxes out. Not a third one. Completely full. So that's fantastic. I'm really happy about that. Now if I had put one shulker box in there, I would have also gotten two half full shulker boxes. That's because there's two loaders down there. That's just the way that it works. But if I put in an even number of shulker boxes, I should get always that exact same number of shulker boxes out of that. I'm really happy about this. Moving on to my storage building here, I have tried really, really hard to like this multi-atom storage system here, and I hate it. I, I've tried so hard. Now, there were some problems that were my own fault. There's some cauldrons in the back that I left uncovered, and they had to be at water level two, and they kept filling up with rain, and it took me a little while to figure out that's what was going on, but the biggest problem I have with this is one that I can't solve, and that's that you cannot leave the area or log off while it is running. Otherwise, it just completely messes up. You end up with this. 
which this is supposed to be the one for stone and then once it starts failing it just stops starts dropping everything into the first row right here and that's a big problem and worse than that it actually messes up your filters up here so if we come up here these two items right here aren't supposed that one there with our skeleton skull these I don't know what was supposed to be in these filter slots right here but it's replaced them with these items and uh, that's super annoying as well. So I did add a switch here to turn it on and off, and I left it off most of the time, and then let it, let it run when you know I'm available to. And I've I've still turned it on while I was working on that thing over there, and then I forgot about it and logged off, and that's when I ended up with this mess right here. And I, I'm I'm done with it. I'm just I I've tried really really hard. I hate this thing. This does not work for me. I cannot have a storage system that I can't leave the area for. I just, I can't have it. This does not work for me. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with one of the old style systems I had, that uh, Nembom sorting system. I think one of those should be fine, especially since I'm not dealing with filled choker boxes or anything like that. I'm just dealing with all the XX items. And I think I'll put that one there. And then I've got a little extra room for some extra sorters. I'm going to have to move this section over here. And then I can actually put a whole other sorting section right here. I think that'll actually end up being better in the long run anyways. But yeah, I, I really tried. I really put a lot of effort into trying to make this work. And I, I can't deal with it anymore. I ended up changing this up a little bit while I was in the middle of building it. I originally had four sorters over here and an item elevator, and I ended up swapping that over. You can see I've got three sorters now, and the four sorters over here, and I've got a water elevator instead of a regular item elevator. And this four sorter is for ender pearls, and the other three are for carrots, bottles of enchanting, and rockets. So these items get sorted out before they get into the hopper section of the system so that they don't get pulled in through a bunch of hoppers and then through this slower system right over here. Those get pulled out and they actually get spat out into a water stream. I originally had a whole bunch of hoppers here. I decided a water stream more made more sense. So I actually ended up with two water streams. This water stream comes over here. I actually got rid of this item elevator that was right there. So those ones go up into my item dispenser over there. And then the other one is for the overflow. So once items go through this system and then go through this system then they're going to go through the overflow again that's a water stream and that one's going to come over here and come over there and that let me get rid of a lot of hoppers and a lot of item dispensers and redstone and stuff like that i think that should help with lag quite a bit so this system right here this uh wall is basically the same as these other walls as the water based sorter so i ended up with room for an extra one that is almost 300 of those type of sorters there and then this wall is the hopper based one this is for items that stack to 16 that's why the ender pearl one had to be moved over here so once you're into hoppers it's safe to use items that can stack to 16 and then this over here is what I had in my old sorting system, but now that I'm not using it as the primary system, basically almost nothing should actually make it into the system, except for items that I don't have very many of. So that's why I wanted to sort out, because I might put a whole bunch of rockets into the system all at once, and I don't want them going through this slower system right here, causing a bunch of lag, and taking forever to get over there. Instead, they're sorted out early, pulled out, sorted into there, and this system shouldn't be active too often. And I think by not using this as a primary system, rooting most of the items around it, I think a lot of the problems that I had with this is my sorting system should no longer be problems anymore. So yeah, I think, uh, I think we're done here as far as the actual sorting system goes. All right, so I think we're finally ready to start laying down the building around this. However, there were some details that I built into the building and uh, I wanted some of them to be like natural elements. So one of them is that there's going to be a giant aquarium here and for that I'm going to need a whole bunch of tropical fish. So I've got a whole bunch of buckets. Uh, this is way more than I need. I'm looking to get probably about 200 tropical fish. We'll see how many we end up with. Ask Azora just jumped online to give me a hand. Um, but yeah, I want to see if we can get a bunch of tropical fish because it's going to be a big aquarium and I want to actually see the fish swimming around. I don't want to have it be real sparse. I want to actually see the tropical fish. So let's see what we can do there. 
That was actually a surprisingly fun diversion. It did not take very long at all. Although I recommend if you do that yourself, uh, do take some potions of water breathing with you just for convenience. I kept forgetting to come up for air, but we ended up with nine choker boxes of fish. Didn't take very long at all. We got two half ones here and then yeah, tons and tons of fish here. So that should make for a nice aquarium. We also got a choker box full of puffer fish. I'm gonna give these to Asta for helping me out. He kind of wanted them. So he's king. I'm gonna send these over to his base, but I'm gonna put in this chest here, we got a chest, a choker box full of buckets of puffer fish and a choker box full of tropical fish. I know there's a million different kinds of tropical fish. I'm not gonna worry about that, but we might not have uh, a reason to do something this ridiculous in the future. So might as well mark these off the list while I have them here. This is kind of cool. All right, now that that's out of the way, just one more thing to do before we get started building that. And that is the material list here. We've got, there's just a ton of concrete and glass that is required for this build. Just a whole bunch of it. Hopefully I got enough sand, should be, should be fine, but I've got to craft all this up. And then we'll start the build. So I went with the same basic theme because I really love the cyan and gray color combination and I didn't want to get rid of that but a lot of the individual design elements had to be changed because they didn't scale particularly well. So for example this roof right here was just a solid gray roof and when you scale that up just a solid platform that's large just didn't look particularly good. I was able to swap that out for glass and that adds an element of depth that I think works pretty well. But the solid platform allowed me to hide lights under carpets. And uh, so I had to try a little harder to add some lights into the build because white wool up on this ledge right here looks horrible. So I needed some lights in order to make sure that we don't get mobs spawning up here. I think this is a nice subtle way to do it and I think it works pretty well. And then another thing that did not scale up particularly well was this floor down here. So I still need to figure out how to add some lights to these sections over here. I'll worry about that later. But the floor in general was just so large, it needed to be broken up with something. So that's when I added the larger center console in the middle. And that allowed me to add some machines in here. And then originally I added these sections right here because I wanted, I needed a hopper line to run items over here. And then I realized, hey, I can actually just run that underground. So that's what I've done. But I really liked these sections right here. They really break up the building as a whole. And so I decided I really wanted to keep them. And Astazora actually had the idea. We were talking about adding color to the build. And I was looking at a bunch of different blocks. And 
nothing really worked as just adding a block to the theme. Like, I just couldn't get anything like that to work. But Astazora had the idea of just adding some natural elements, and I think that really worked really well. So I've got some natural elements here. I love this waterfall. Just some flowers and some grass, just little tiny things, because when you make a building bigger, you need to add more detail. And so I think this really works in adding detail. I added the rounded corner. I think that works really nice. Some nice natural elements here. And that's when I came up with the idea of just turning this hard, large thing into an aquarium. And that also adds some pop to color because I can add some coral down underneath. Got all the fish. And yeah, I think this... I think this looks awesome. And so all together, yeah, I'm really happy with this building. I think it all comes together really, really well. It took a lot of work because like I said, when you make it bigger, you need to add a lot more detail. But I think this all comes together really, really well. I'm really happy with how it turned out. <laughs> and look at, by the way, how much bigger this is than any of the other buildings on the island. This thing is massive. Uh, this building is gonna get a little bit bigger and that might help offset that a little bit. But man, that thing is huge, but man, I love how it looks. So there's still a ton that needs to be done here. Obviously, I ripped out a couple of storage systems here, so I need to go through and resort all those items. I'm hoping to have that done between episodes, but also this basement down here. My hope is to have to replace these stairs with a hidden staircase I made a tutorial for recently. But also down here, I want to put all the micro farms that I had in my last storage building down here somewhere. I think there's a good place to put them and maybe clean up the design a little bit. I mean, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's, you know, a basement. I still want to have access to all these machines, but I could at the very least, like, run the floor over the complete area or something like that so something to figure out at a later date but that's where i'm going to end for now i want to thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this episode and i hope to see you again soon bye now